Yep, great. Well, uh, first of all, my name is Tim Morris. I'm with Family Care Path. I'd like to thank HL7 for this opportunity to be here today. Um, we'd like to go through and talk a little bit about uh, first why we came up with this app and its origin. Um, Family Care Path is, it has an exclusive worldwide licensing agreement with the Cleveland Clinic. So the products that you're going to see today, particularly My Legacy, was born out of the Cleveland Clinic. Family Care Path is marketing and distributing that product uh, on their behalf. Um, it is currently a Smart on Fire app. Um, we're in the final stages within Cerner and currently pursuing the App Store as well as all scripts. The two other programs that we also have, uh, Care Path Connect is a um, basically a uh, network of a um, help me out here <laughs> genetic counselors that would take uh, the next stage from people who have completed my legacy and you'll you'll kind of understand the pathway here going forward cancer nav is also a navigation tool for cancer navigators um, within a hospital setting to allow them to go through that process of navigating those patients through uh, the care path so we're all familiar with the different products out there on the market such as 23andme ancestry.com and while the whole process of a family health history seems very simple, unfortunately there are not a lot of ways that physicians can bring this information directly into the EMR today. Um, very simple, the program takes the information uh, from the individual there we go. Um, and puts it through a process here in the cloud base. The program was originally designed by Kara Sang. She's one uh, recognized as one of the top 400 biomedical researchers in the world. Currently active there, chairs up the uh, Genomics Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. So when she put this together, we were looking for, she was looking for ways which this information could be brought into an EMR and utilized by physicians in a standardized form or fashion uh, brought into the EMR. Um, we also recognize that there is a very limited workforce of genetic counselors. There's about 4,000 or so in the U.S. right now, so the demand for genetic counselors is very limited. That's the reason we designed a network of genetic counselors for this. So the program is a patient-entered, web-based clinical decision support tool. Um, it takes those genetic and genomic factors and combines them with different environmental factors to provide the uh, the ending result here, which Mike will show you here in a moment. Um, basically, uh, an individual will get an invitation from their physician, uh, typically through uh, something such as MyChart or another way where it would invite that patient to fill out the My Legacy program before meeting with the physician. They would go online, they would fill that information out. Mike will show you that process here in a moment. But what the program does is it takes that information that the patient fills out and it runs it through 12 different um, current algorithms that were designed by uh, Dr. Eng and then provides with a risk stratification for these different conditions based on the individual's responses to the information they provided online. We're also adding additional modules into the program so we're not really limited to just cancers uh, right now uh, but looking at the high risk uh, more prevalent conditions that can be identified through the family health history tool. So again, it provides very standard, systematic intake of discrete data. Right now, when you typically go to your PCP, they may ask a question like, well, do you have any family history? Uh, that information is just manually entered, if it is entered at all, into a tab, into that EMR. This program will take that data and put it into the EMR for the physician as well as low, uh, providing a pedigree drawing for the physician to be able to understand what those risks are for the individual. Um, reduces significant expense of unnecessary testing. A lot of physicians respectfully do not have that knowledge in terms of what type of genetic uh, tests should be run. Uh, the genetic counselor who would be referred to that patient should they show a medium to high risk would then uh, identify that genetic test for the physician, again, that information transferring back into the EMR. So at this point, we'll turn it over to Mike. So remember about the bravery points for trying the actual live demo. Um, <laughs> so what we see here right now, um, Cerner has provided um, 
and uh, it's, it's actually a work in process, but it's a, a simple simulator for a patient portal so that we can launch the Smart on Fire app directly from this and get a better feel for what a patient experience might look like. Um, but you'll notice here we have a, a patient who's already been logged into the portal named Loma Smart. And as part of uh, her options on the portal, we have a link directly to the My Legacy app. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And once that gets uh, launched, the user is then prompted with this authorization prompt to say, you're about to share information with this other app. Do you think that's OK? And then upon authorization, um, that message gets sent back. And now we're actually loading the My Legacy app directly. So um, Smart on Fire <coughs> actually. <laughs> course there we go the smart on fire solves a um, solves a real problem for workflow in most cases um, so what I'm gonna do is try a different route instead of the, the demo from the, from the page I'm gonna go ahead and log in uh, bear with me This is why you should never do a live demo, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Everybody can follow the phone <laughs> At least we can laugh at ourselves. <laughs> so had that smart launch worked, it would have taken us directly into the My Legacy application, um, where the patient is prompted, and for the sake of the demonstration, I've already pre-populated some of the data so that you don't have to, in the 15 minutes, see the whole thing. Um, but it, it brings them through a process where in the first step they answer questions about themselves, then they construct their family tree and answer some questions about their family health history, um, at which point they submit the result and the algorithm is designed at the Cleveland Clinic based on uh, evidence and the work of Kara Zhang um, are kicked off and they generate a risk reference report. So um, I'm going to take us right into the first section. The All About Me section really has um, a few forms. Uh, in, the, in the case of a, of a male, there's two forms. And uh, for women, there's a third page about women's health issues. Uh, but you can see there's a, there's a small uh, integration with FHIR at this point so that we can pull in patient demographic information, including their sex and date of birth. Um, we explicitly collect ethnicity and race because we found that that information was you know, less reliable in some cases. But uh, as they continue on, <clears throat> as again, they'll, they'll either have one or two pages where they continue to answer some, some questions about their personal health and some of their social behaviors. Uh, and then they move on to the family structure view. And when that loads up, uh, a new patient would be prompted with some of their family tree already constructed because as a human being, we know that you have parents and they had parents, so some of the information is already in there. Um, but as you go through, it takes you side by side through your family. And for first degree relatives, you're prompted to answer some questions about their ethnicity and their backgrounds and um, you have an opportunity to opt out. So if, for instance, you don't have any information about this, the health of this person, you won't be prompted continuously as you go through the disease history process. Um, once again, you're guided through your mother's side of the family, continue on to your father's side of the family. Uh, you construct your, um, your tree for your children and siblings. And when you've completed that, you're, you're brought to a summary page where it shows your entire family tree and does some data validation to make sure that there's data consistency so that children are not uh, older than their parents and so on. So, uh, it's a, uh, a nice step in the process to make sure that the information that you entered actually makes sense before we start the risk assignments. Once you've completed that, uh, as Tim noted, we have uh, 12 different conditions that, were, that are built out um, that we track. And they're selected um, because there's evidence to support the risk assignments, and they're also actionable. So the intent of this application is not to just give you bad news that you could potentially get a, a certain condition. It's saying that if we identify the risk early enough, there are some steps that we can take to help you uh, mitigate that risk. Um, but the pattern that we go through is that there's a series of questions. And again, it follows the same pattern of 
uh, mother's side of the family, father's side of the family, and then answer some questions about you, your children, and siblings. And we picked this approach primarily because uh, this is the same way that you would gather the information. So you'd find, a, um, ideally, you find a, a good family historian who understands the family health history. You contact that person, you ask a series of, series of questions. So it would be organized that way in the way that you capture the information. Um, but the, <clears throat> the questions themselves follow a certain pattern. Uh, in this case, we're asking about <coughs> diabetes and if any of these um, people have been affected by it. If you select individuals within your family tree and continue on, it will guide you from this funnel level question down to a more detailed set of questions to help better understand that condition. The patient is guided through um, stepwise so that it follows the same pattern. Top level um, funnel question followed by detailed questions to, to help refine information about that. Uh, the, what, what's nice about this model, um, Smart on Fire solves a workflow problem for us where we now can have patients do this from the comfort of their own home so that they have time to gather the, the important information that we need to assign the risk levels uh, as, we, as we present their uh, care team with that information. So the, the patient will follow the same pattern and answer a series of these questions about different conditions as they relate to the, the risk generation and they'll complete it for their entire family and once they've, once they've completed that, they'll be asked to submit it. And at that point, um, that information is uh, sent to the risk calculation algorithms and a risk report is generated. And I'm gonna pull, go back to the PowerPoint, the safe zone, um, and, and, and take a look at the, the risk reference that we have here. So the risk reference material is organized so that um, the care team has quick access to uh, some really important information about this patient. So you can see the list of the different diseases and conditions that we're assigning risk for is presented on that first couple of pages. And it takes them through with an assignment of the risk level. And then there's some supporting information about how we um, came up with that risk and um, offers a pedigree. So in the, in the clinical consideration and risk justification area, it shows it has some recommendations about what you should do next and then it gives you information about how um, the system decided that this was a genetic risk instead of a um, moderate risk or um, uh, average population risk. So it shows you the inputs of how that risk was actually determined. And it also does, uh, it also constructs a family pedigree so that based on each of these conditions you can see a view into how pervasive all these different conditions are across your entire family. Uh, we found uh, at the Cleveland Clinic where this has been in production for a few years and they've collected, uh, it's approaching 30,000 different um, patients have completed this and, um, and used this as part of the clinical workflow. Uh, it becomes a really important communication tool for uh, primary care physicians that want to convey to their patients that you need to act now to prevent something that's coming down the road because they can look at this and say, I saw what that did to uh, aunt so-and-so and so I want to make sure that I can take the appropriate steps to avoid that as well. So one of the things Mike did not mention that is that this is broken up into modules. So if you decided that you just wanted to do the cancer module, you could do that or the diabetes or the cardio so that the patient does not have to go through all phases if that physician, let's say, was just a cardio doctor, was not interested in the cancer analysis. And, um, and, and just to round it out too, this is a, a quick view of how the um, physician would interact with it, where there's a um, launch to the My Legacy app right from uh, within their existing current workflow, so they don't have to leave the e EMR and, and the smart launch works from there as well. So I think this is, this is one of the rare examples where the, the patient has a launch from a patient portal or can, be, can collect information from home, and then that result is available right in line with their clinical workflow. Uh, and we think that's a, a critical step in, in the success of, of making this work. Um, current state, we, we, as Tim mentioned, we're in the process of final validation at Cerner. Uh, we're, we're just getting into the Epic App Orchard, and uh, we've already done some connectivity with Orion Health as well. So, so closing, basically, if you think about what our health is determinant of, if it's 40% environmental, 20% based on your health care, 20% or 40% based on your personal choices, I'm sorry, 20% healthcare and 20% environmental, that leaves 20% to your family health history. 
we think that's a 20% that everyone should be well aware of your risks involved with it. Thank you.